Submit any questions or requests to grengineeringhelp at gmail.com. All right, so here we have a collection tank, and we have three inlets putting steam into a collection tank, and we have one outlet. So we're told that at the first inlet, we have a quality of 0.9, so it's a two-phase mixture. We have the pressure at all of these inlets and outlets, by the way, of being one bar. And we have the mass flow rate at all the inlets, and we're not given the one at the exit. We're also told that heat exits the collection tank at a rate of negative 40 kilowatts. So the first thing we're asked to find is the mass flow rate. And now notice that pretty much all of our givens are summarized right over here. So we could get right into solving this thing. So for part A, we're going to apply the law of conservation of mass, which just says that the sum of the mass that flows into the system must be equal to the sum of the mass that exits the system. So in other words, this means that m.1 plus m.2 plus m.3, which are all the mass flows going into the system, must be equal to the mass that exits the system, or m.4. Now we can just plug in our numbers here. So we have m.1 is equal to 0 0.8, m.2 is equal to 2, m.3 is 1.2, and this equals m.4, which comes out to be 4 kilograms per second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the enthalpy or the specific enthalpy at the first inlet and we're told that we have one bar and we have a quality of 0 0.9 and this is useful because we know we're not a superheated vapor and we're not a compressed liquid. So we can just use the relation of H1 or the enthalpy, specific enthalpy is equal to the saturated fluid or saturated liquid specific enthalpy plus the quality times the difference of a saturated vapor minus saturated liquid specific enthalpy. Now we already know that we're looking for H1. We know we have the quality of 0 0.9, so all we're looking for is the saturated fluid and vapors specific enthalpies, and we're going to look for it at one bar, which is saturation pressure, given that we have a two-phase mixture. So we're going to pull up table A3 because it gives us the saturated water of liquid vapor pressure tables. So at one bar right over here, you see that we have a saturated uh, liquid enthalpy of 417.46 and a saturated vapor specific enthalpy of 2675.5. So we can just plug these numbers in here. So we have 417.46 plus the quality of 0 0.9, and that's going to be multiplied by, the difference here is actually given in the properties table, by the way, if you didn't notice, which would be 2258. And all that number is is just simply this number right here minus this number right here. Now, if you plug these numbers into your calculator, you'll have that H1 is equal to 2, or 2449, 0.66, and that's going to be in kilojoules per kilogram. Now at the second inlet to find the specific enthalpy, we see that we're not given a quality, so that just makes things a little bit more complicated because we don't know if we're going to pull up the superheated property table or the compressed liquid property table or even a two-phase property table like we did for inlet one. So all we need to do is determine the phase status of inlet number two. And to do so, we can just draw a TH diagram. So we'll have temperature versus specific enthalpy. Now we can just draw the dome here. And we can draw the pressure curve. And right over here would be the saturation uh, temperature. And this is all at one bar. So basically, we're going to check the properties table of a two-phase mixture to find out what the saturation is at one bar. If the temperature in the property table is lower than the temperature provided here of 200 degrees Celsius, then we know that we're working with a superheated fluid. And if we're right on par with 200 as the saturation, we have a two-phase mixture. And if the saturation temperature is higher than our inlet of 200, then we have a compressed liquid. 
So when we pull up table A3, we look for one bar, and we see that the saturation temperature is 99.63. So Tsat is 99.63, and that's in degrees Celsius. So where we actually are along this curve here is higher than 99.63. It's actually 200 degrees Celsius, which is probably somewhere up here. So that being said, we know that we're not going to be able to use this property table because this is for saturated water. So we're going to have to turn to our superheated water or superheated steam table. So because we know that we're working with a superheated water vapor, we just turn to table A4 and we see that at one bar, which is what our pressure is, we just go over to our temperature. So we're at one bar and 200 degrees Celsius. And we go over to our specific enthalpy and we find that it is... 2875.3 so when we go back here we can say that h2 is equal to 2875.3 kilojoules per kilograms now we can move on to inlet 3 and it's really just the same case as inlet 2 we don't have a phase uh, status here so we just have to look for it so we can draw another th diagram so you'll have your temperature on the Y and you'll have your specific enthalpy on the X. And then you just draw your dome here. And then you can draw your pressure curve. And right over here would be your saturation temperature, Tsat. And we have it at, again, one bar. So this is, again, going to be 99.63, as we know from before. Saturation temperature for one bar is 99.63, and that's in degrees Celsius. However, in this case, we're told that at inlet 3, we have 95 degrees Celsius. So where you are on this curve is more so right over here. That's kind of where you are on this curve, which is actually in the compressed liquid region. Now, preferably, if you're on this side of the dome, you'd want to use the compressed liquid table. However, your compressed liquid table and your properties table might not actually have 95 degrees Celsius at one bar. So just remember that enthalpy or specific enthalpy varies more with temperature than it does with pressure. So that being said, we can just approximate this compressed liquid at 95 degrees as a saturated liquid at 95 degrees. So we can turn to table A2, which is the saturated liquid table, and we can see that at 95 degrees, 95 degrees, we have a specific enthalpy of 397.96, and that's in kilojoules per kilogram. So we can go back to the problem, and we can say that the specific enthalpy at inlet 3 can be approximated as 397.96. And that's kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the last thing we're asked to find is the phase status and the exit temperature of the exiting water. And we're also told that the exiting water is mixed water. So it's probably not going to be superheated vapor. It's probably going to have an X quality between zero and one. So to find the exit temperature and quality, we're going to indirectly find it by finding the specific enthalpy at the fourth state. So we can do this by using an energy balance over a control volume. So the energy balance over a control volume would be the heat transfer over the control volume minus the work over the control volume plus the sum of mass that flows in times the specific enthalpy of those masses flowing in minus the sum of the outlets so it's going to be the mass flow rates that are flowing out of the system times the specific enthalpies that are flowing out of those outlets and this whole equation is going to be equal to zero now we see that there's no moving shafts here and we're not given a work so we can just cross out the work and that's going to be equal to zero and just like we did before with the mass flow rates, we know that we have three inlets and one exit. So we'll have a mass one, two, and three in the inlets and a four at the exit. So let's go ahead and break down this equation another step. So we'll have the heat transfer of the control volume plus the mass flow rate at one times the enthalpy at one 
plus the mass flow rate, so this is the sum of inlets right over here, at 2 times the enthalpy at 2 plus the mass flow rate at 3 times the inlet at 3. And then from that, we're going to subtract all the outlets, which would just simply be mass flow rate 4 times specific enthalpy 4. And this is all going to be equal to 0. Now we can use some simple plug and chug. So we have a negative 40 right over here, negative 40 kilowatts for the QCV. And then we have a mass flow rate at 1 of 0 0.8. And that's in kilograms per second times h1 is 2449.66 and that's kilojoules per kilogram plus the mass flow rate at 2 is 2 kilograms per second we have the specific enthalpy at 2 is 2875 point three kilojoules per kilogram and hopefully you see the units here are canceling out and then you have the mass flow rate at 3 is 1.2 kilograms per second times 397.96 kilojoules per kilogram minus the mass flow rate at 4 which is we calculated as 4 kilograms per second times the specific enthalpy at 4 which is actually an unknown so we'll leave it as h4 and we're going to set this all equal to 0 now from simple algebraic rearrangement, we can see that the enthalpy at 4 equates to 2036.97, and that's in kilojoules per kilogram. Now the significance of this enthalpy is that it tells us where we are along the curve on the TH diagram. So we can just reuse one of these ones right over here since it's not too specific. If you forget that we have this point over here, you basically have the same idea. You have the temperature and you have the enthalpy, and you're given it at one bar. So we don't know what the saturation temperature is. However, what we do know is we can find what HF and HG are from the properties table. So we can turn to our properties table right over here, and we can see that at a pressure of one bar, we have HF of 417 and HG of 2675. Now, our number was 2036, so we know that we're going to be somewhere in between HF and HG, so we know we're a two-phase mixture. But just to be sure, let's go ahead and label our TH diagram. So we have HF is equal to 417.46, and we have HG is equal to 2675.5. Now... Once again, our number is 2036.97, which I'm going to not draw on the scale, approximate is somewhere around right over here. So that's going to be equal to 2036.97 on that graph. And we can use the relation that we originally used from the first, from the first inlet, and we can say that H4 is equal to HF plus X times HG minus HF. Now, in this case, we have everything except for the quality, so we can say 2036.97 is equal to 417.46 plus X, which we don't know, and times HFG, which is, uh, again, calculated for us as 2258. Now, from simple rearrangement, you can find that x is equal to 0 0.7172. So there's our equality. And because we know that our quality is not superheated and it's not a compressed liquid, we can just use the saturation temperature. So from our table here, or our TH diagram, we see that our saturation temperature is 99.63 degrees Celsius. So our temperature at 4 is just equal to that. So we can say T4 is equal to the saturation temperature at one bar, and that's equal to 99.63 degrees Celsius. And there you have it. You have all the enthalpies, and you have your exit temperature, exit phase status, and your mass flow rate at the outlet.